Hey, what's going on? Nick, MHR, off-road. My wife's Jeep, JKU here, 2011. Steering wheel controls kind of quit working. Airbag light will come on and off sometimes. Kind of parts starting it. I think it's the clock spring. Thought I'd film it because I suck at filming. Got the new clock springs from a gauge steering wheel. Taken apart, pulled off. Clock spring taken off. Get that kind of swapped out and see how good I can do it editing and showing it so here we go so once you get the battery disconnected you need to take the airbag out first that's the first step there are two 10 millimeter bolts one is on this side and one is on this side you'll get take those two out and then we can get the horn itself out all right now that these two screws on either side of the steering wheel is out you should be able to take the airbag straight out there are two connectors for the airbag and a plug I believe for your horn on the back and I will bring you guys in for that. All right, and then as you can see here, here are the two connectors for the airbag and the third connector, I believe for the horn. To pop these airbag ones off, there's two tabs right here. You just kind of squeeze them and pull them straight up. Just kind of come, kind of wiggle right off. And then this connector here is held in by clamps. You can kind of pull that out. And then once it's out, you should be able just to pull it out uh, it's kind of in there, kind of takes two hands, just pulls straight out. And then that should be it for your airbag. Now with the horn off, you have this, I believe is a 13 millimeter nut. And then this plug, which I believe is for the steering wheel controls up here. Make sure you mark or remember how this is so that we can get it back on as straight as you can. That way you don't have to go get an alignment or anything. So let me get this off and this off and then we'll come back. All right, now with the 13 millimeter bolt out and this unplugged, we're gonna get a steering wheel puller. It needs to go in these two squares. Hook going outwards is what I'm going to do. Push on the center nut and actually pull the steering wheel off. And then once that gets off, we'll work on the actual cover that is covering the clock spring and get that off. All right, so you put the steering wheel puller in these two holes. It was kind of hard to do, have the camera, have, I needed a lot of room and hands. So I didn't record it, but press the punts in the center hook these two hooks. It wanted to walk in, so I actually <laughs> stuck two wrenches on the inside of the puller so that the little hooks wouldn't pull out. The hook would go in and hook on the outside, but I would, I had to put a wrench or a thin piece of metal to stop it from walking in and wanting to stay out. So to basically stay pressed against the outside, you'll need the steering wheel puller that has these two hooks that can go inside those two holes there. Once you get that, you'll be able to take the steering wheel straight off. And there's really nothing hooked to it. All those connectors you did before is what basically stops that. This is actually your clock spring right here. So we will get this actual trim piece off and then be able to get to unbolting the clock spring from the steering column. And to get this trim piece off, I believe there were three T20 screws. There's one in each side of the actual trim piece here. And I believe just one in the bottom. And once those come out, I believe that is all that's holding it on. All right, so I got those two screws out and I'm not sure about this bottom one. I'm pretty sure it needs to come out, so I took it out in the center down here. Um, Try to actually lower the steering wheel, give us a little more room. And I believe this just needs to pop up off of the key ignition. And with this one loose, you should be able to get this, wiggle this one out. There is the clock spring right here with the the actual levers bolted to it. Um, get this down and lock this. All right, now with this off, there's actually three T20 screws that are holding the actual clock spring to the steering column. You have one right here. There is one right here. And then this one is kind of hard to see right here. You don't want to take these out because this is actually holding steering column to like the dash, but it'll be this one here, this one here, and this one here. And once you take those off, it should just slide right off. All right, once you get those top two screws and the front one here off, you kind of have to rotate it because there's a tab on this passenger top screw. So you kind of have to rotate it and kind of, kind of work it off a little bit and it should come right off. I went ahead and unplugged four plugs on the back, the one, two, three, four. So we have one, two, three, and then this little black one under the ignition right here. But now that this is off, we can take this over to the bench and actually get the lever swapped to the new clock spring and then get it back over here and get it bolted back together.
All right, so now that we actually got the old clock spring out and we have the new clock spring here ready to go, we need to get the actual levers off of this clock spring so we can transfer it over to the new unit. And how they are held in is there is one Phillips screw here and one Phillips screw here, and they actually just slide in. They have these two connectors on each side that plug from the clock spring into the switches. There's one here and one here. I'm going to go ahead and get them pulled out and then get those disconnected. And then we can talk about getting it swapped over to the new unit. So actually now these are removed. This is actually just a little wiring harness that connects the two together. So probably leave it in one of them. That way you can just actually transfer the unit over as a whole. So on this new clock spring, you don't want to remove this until you have the steering wheel back on. So you want to leave... Just leave all this alone right here. It's quite simple when you're putting it back in. There's just some channel slots here that this piece needs to line into. You just slide them back in, get them screwed back together, do both of them, and then we can actually get it put back in the car. All right, now that we got the switches bolted into the new clock spring, um, it's pretty much all going to be the reverse style. We're going to slide this on, kind of rotating it on to get it past this top passenger screw. Then we will hook in the four plugs, the one black one over here by the ignition, these two bottom white plugs, and the top plug. And this will be the black one over by the ignition, the two bottom white ones, and this top one. And we'll get it back on there, get it set, plugged in. Then we will go ahead and put those three bolts back in. You got the two top T20s right here and here. That is right here and over here. On the front right here, right by the ignition itself but we'll get all those plugged in and bolted back on and then we'll come back all right now that we got this bolted back on everything's hooked back up on the three screws one two three you're tightened down now we need to go ahead and reinstall the actual trim pieces and it's pretty much exactly reverse order of how they came off we'll put this one on put this one up uh, the one bottom screw in the center down here and then the two from the bottom to the top and that'll get the trim piece back on, then we can actually get the steering wheel and everything mounted back up. All right, now that we have the trim piece back on, setting the steering wheel back in there, we'll feed through those airbag sensors, slide it over this tab, and uh, try to realign the steering wheel as best as we can. And then we will put the center bolt back in there, torque that back down to spec, then we can remove the tab and then start plugging everything in, get the air horn back in here, and that should be the most of it. All right, now that we have the steering wheel bolted back down and torqued in, we can go ahead and remove this yellow tab and you just, just pull the tab, pull it out. And then we can go ahead and plug that top plug into it and we can take the horn and I went ahead and clipped that clip we pulled out of the tab before back in there and then that should just slide right in there and then on the those steering wheel airbag horns, um, they're just color coded, so black goes to black, yellow goes to yellow. We'll get those plugged back in, get the horn put back in. And once you get that airbag back in, those two 10 millimeter bolts on the side, get those back in, and that should be it. Now we'll hook the battery back up, verify everything's working, and we should be good to go. And as we can see now, her steering wheel control buttons are working again. I can volume up, I can volume down, I can change the radio station if I'd like. All of our buttons here work on the gauges, so it was a quick, easy fix. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.